the fourth tier, which is Wisconsin, Stanford, Tulsa, Colorado. That's a Hail Mary. So you've talked about how this is a track meet, basically, because the course is so flat and the temperature is going to be warm. This will not be Madison. This will not be Terre Haute. This will be, won't be Stillwater either because it's going to be incredibly flat. If you go based on track PBs, have you looked at that? Who has the edge there? I did not do that because you can't do that. And I'll tell you why. There are certain athletes who are expected to be good in people's top five who don't have a 5K PB. Maybe they only have a 10K. Yeah. Maybe they're a miler. Like someone like George Kush is really hard to kind of analyze because he doesn't really have any good 5K to his name. So you can do that. But I mean, I would argue, I would say, I think I was breaking down Oklahoma State, Notre Dame, and uh, Northern Arizona. I was like, mm -hmm. if the number one, uh, if the number one uh, indicator is last year's championship, then Notre Dame mm -hmm. wins. If the number one yep. indicator is this regular season, then I think Oklahoma State wins. Mm -hmm. And then if the number one indicator is track pedigree then i think nau wins if that makes sense so no conclusions at all here for gordon yeah well the anybody conclusion was oklahoma win. state anybody any obviously anyone can win there's never a sure thing in sports right i mean tampa bay just lost to the washington football team so anything can happen but yeah i think you just have to be able to correctly kind of let people know let the world know what let me where ask you the, the pe what the pecking order is and the pecking order in my opinion is oklahoma state northern arizona notre dame and then the rest okay let's go back two years to Terre Haute when nau was a big favorite how many teams could you fit in that gap that we thought existed between nau and byu because that those were the two those are the two but there was a big we thought there was a sizable gulf there and they ended up losing how many teams fit in that same group now, do you think? How many teams would be smaller underdogs than BYU was in 2019? Got to be at I'm least four. Confused. Yeah. So, well, yeah, the gap well, between hey, Oklahoma. If you're saying, here, if you're saying BYU was 10 to 1 to win the 2019 NCAA Cross Country Championship, how many teams this year have better than 10 to 1 odds, other than Oklahoma State? Because you were saying Oklahoma State's the. And I'm just using those numbers. Oh, um, as I would, an example, I, so I would say five teams have better right. odds than the BYU team had in 2019. Yeah, that's say, okay. NAU, Notre Dame, BYU, Iowa State, and Arkansas all have a better shot at winning than BYU did when they actually won. Yeah. So uh, my point is yeah. the number sixth ranked team could win this title, and it would be in many ways a bigger upset than the second ranked team winning in uh or sorry it would not Unless be as big of an upset yeah yeah I it up. upset. you know what i mean yeah you know what I mean. yeah which is weird which is weird it's, yeah. it's, it's just one of those years where everybody's packed together and a lot of these teams oh if you had one more guy then they'd be able to put it away right if you had one more guy you'd be able if if, if such and such stayed another year or such and such didn't transfer then it would be a different story but everybody seems to have strengths as you outlined but everybody also has noticeable weaknesses i you put together your projections of all americans too and you have uh byu nau and stanford all having three projected all americans but that doesn't tell the whole story because we know four and five are so important yeah yeah i mean looking back you just have to nau has a huge hill to climb they have to replace luis Garhalva and blaze farrow two guys who finished in the top 15 Whereas yep. Oklahoma State and Notre Dame, they don't have to replace anyone. They just bring everyone back. Oklahoma State actually added someone. Notre Dame mm -hmm. added a guy in Carmody who didn't run. So Oklahoma yep. State and Notre Dame added – Oklahoma State added the 1330 guy. Notre Dame added the 1340 guy. Northern Arizona lost a 13-teens guy and a sub-28, 10K guy. So, like, yeah. Notre Dame has – a much harder hill to win. I mean, that's what's so impressive about Notre Dame, that the fact that they're still in the conversation despite losing those. 
Um, but in order for, I have a, in my cross country show tomorrow, I'm going to do a whole breakdown of um, how each of these teams will win, like what needs to happen. And yeah. basically, I kind of do a creation where it's not about what you do, it's about what other teams do. So the only team that can control their own destiny is Oklahoma State, in my opinion. And then yeah. as you go down the pecking order, you need something to go wrong with Oklahoma State for Northern Arizona to win, something to go wrong with both of those teams for Notre, Notre Dame to win, both the top three teams need uh, something to go wrong for BYU to win, and et cetera, et cetera, all the way down to Colorado. So I yeah. kind of break it out. And on the, well, and on the flip side of that, you could have a team, not even podium, that could win because someone's not going to have a good day. Just a lot yeah. of averages tell us that. So you could have a team tumble all the way down to, to six or seven because someone's going to have a, have a good day from that second group. All right, let's jump over to the women. Let's go to the women and your final women's ranking. 